Hello and welcome back to The Real Deal. Today, we have got the second leg of the Champions League game against PSG. And then we've also got Seville in the league. It's a huge episode in terms of the Champions League. We drew last episode, of course, against PSG at home 1-0. PSG, of course, have an away goal, but I, I, it's going to be such a tough game. You know, it's going to be one goal in it either way, I reckon. So now, now that I've said that, they'll probably beat us 5-0 or something like that. So that kind of renders it redundant. But it's going to be such a massive game today. I'm actually kind of nervous for it. And when I say kind of nervous, I mean very, very nervous. Form coming into today's game, though, has been very good, of course. Where we've not lost since that Real Madrid game uh, just after the winter break. Since you were last here, uh, we have played four games. A 3-0 win over Granada uh, with wingers scoring the goals there. Luka Adjic with two and also Lee with one. A 0-0 draw with Atletico Madrid away from home was also a pretty decent result. Atletico Madrid not been as prolific as they have been in recent seasons, but you know they're still a very, very good side. To, so to make sure we got a 0-0 draw there was very, very good. Next up at home to Valencia, who I think are third in the table, I believe. We'll see in a minute. Uh, Handles on which scoring in the 11th minute there to make sure we win that 1-0. And then last time out, a 3-1 win against Tenerife. Again, Handel Zmanovic with two and Luka Adzic with one. So 10 points from a possible 12 there is pretty good. Um, it actually extends our lead at the top of the table. When we drew to um, Atletico Madrid, I think Real Madrid lost to someone. Who did they lose to if we look through... Uh, they lost to they lost to Real Hispanis, uh, Real Betis. So uh, that was quite good for us. Barcelona club says back into third, actually. Valencia down to fourth now. But importantly, we are nine points clear at the top of the table uh, with only nine games to go this season. So it's it is exciting. Are we going to bottle it? There's a massive potential for it. But we're in a great position right now. And I think we have got the quality to do it and win the league. Do we have the quality, though, to beat PSG today? Uh, well... I'm not too sure. We had a good game last time out at home. Uh, we were the stronger side at home, I think. But PSG away is a different story. We're going to go for our normal formation to start off with, at least. Our normal attacking formation. We'll see if we can try and get an early goal. Then we can sort of sit back a little bit more. So, Burke starts in goal with Kukurela, Sharon, And Babic is just back from injury. Of course, uh, Lemos is still out for a long, long, long time. Not going to see him again. But Babic is just about back from his concussions. He's going to start today at right centre-back, uh, and he's going to partner Ruiz, who is playing right back today. The usual midfield of Harbo, Dad and Cardia, with Adzic and Orsolini on the left and right, and of course, Hans Osmanovic up front. So it, that's the strongest lineup possible, I think. I really think, um, I mean, Babic, I'd swap him with Lemos if Lemos was fit, but other than that, that is the strongest possible lineup, I believe, this squad can have, and it's the best possible chance we've got of securing qualification to the quarterfinals of the Champions League. Right then, kickoff is upon us, and for whatever reason, we're in blue today. I know we are playing away to PSG, but they're playing in yellow. Uh, I'm not quite sure why, because that's our away kit. But, you know, we'll play in our blue kit, make us feel at home in the club at least. Early highlights then, coming for PSG, as uh, they get a chance. I mean, absolutely just stood off him there. The defence did nothing there to let Martin go through, have a clean shot on goal. Luckily for us, his shooting's not very good, clearly. But to be fair, I if we can beat PSG today... I'd put us up there for, for doing quite well this time in the Champions League because PSG won it last season. And I think if we can beat them today, that's a real statement of intent of how good we actually are as a team and how well we can gel together as, as a team. Like the players, they may not be the world beaters themselves, all of them, but combined together, you know, they form a pretty good unit. First half, though, has been quite cagey. I mean, there's been no highlights apart from that one highlight we saw. Uh, PSG having the better of the game so far, so perhaps we do need to change formation a little bit in the second half. Although, has someone just been sent off? Harbo. Har well, okay, maybe we do need to change formation uh, quite quite quickly. That that's not that is not what we wanted. Two yellow cards. He picked up two yellow cards in the first half. That is, that's not great. We're going to move to the five at the back system then. I think I, this is just the way to go. I think I think we have to do this now. Unfortunately, that means Orsolini is going to have to come off the pitch. Uh, he's going to have to come back uh, because we do need to bring on uh, we need to bring on Sanchez at centre-back, so we've got more cover at the back. Does leave us a little bit light up front, but Hans Osmanovic and Luka Adzid should be okay on the counter-attack. They've both got a lot of pace on them. They should be okay on the counter-attacks. I think this is going to have to be the way to go for the rest of the game because we, we can't have our attacking style of play. I mean, it's not obviously, you can see the stats down here, it's not worked so much so far. Now that we're down to 10 men, it's really going to be tough to play an attacking formation, I think, especially against the PSG side, who are better than us, really. So, I think that was the best thing to do. So we, we brought Sanchez on for, for Orsolini. We've changed formation. We're going to sit back a little bit more, try and get him on the counter-attack. If this works, I'm a genius. PSG, though, are coming at us straight away in the second half. Dembele on the ball, coming forward, puts it across to Vinicius Jr., uh, his, his fullback on the overlap. Theo, that was a great overlap, to be fair. He puts it into Neymar, who's punished us already at the start of the second half, two minutes into it. <sighs> Harbo may have just cost us the entire game. It's difficult to know what to do, though. If you had a man sent off, it is really, really difficult to get yourself back into the game 
in any sort of way really and especially when PSG are you know a level above us essentially it's gonna it's just it's nearly impossible I've got to say so unfortunately I I mean I know it's 20 minutes or so left to go in this game we can make some changes out there but I I just don't think it's going to happen. Stan's going to come on for Kadir then out there. Uh, we'll also bring Sousa on for Adzic. They're the two players that probably could make an impact coming off the bench. However, I don't think it's actually that going to happen really. Essentially, as a throw in there it wasn't great. Back to Oblak, the goalkeeper. It is 10 10 on the pitch right now actually as, as Theo uh, is injured there apparently. He's getting some treatment at right back. So we've got a bit of space on that right hand side of the pitch. Uh, if we want to use it, although we go down the left-hand side. Cucurella playing very, very high there. And now he's all out of position as Neymar gets the ball uh, coming forward. He's on a yellow card himself, Neymar. If he can get sent off, that'd be great. He puts the cross in towards Martin. Vinicius Jr. just puts it over the bar. That was a, a dangerous counter-attack from PSG. That's what I wanted us to do. That's what I was expecting us to do in the second half. But really, we've, we've not created or done anything. And I think that is because we've just not been able to have that kind of possession, that kind of time on the ball now that we've got one less man on the pitch. Although Osmanovic has a very poor pass there. Diego Delot clears it up towards Neymar Jr. But it doesn't get there. Ruiz puts it back to Burke. Urza, Sharon now on the ball. Come on, boys. I believe in you. You know, I've been been a bit pessimistic in this game. I believe in you, though. His dad is, dad is through. Perhaps should have taken a touch before taking his shot there. But at least, at least we're making those chances now. We're having shots, at least. Unfortunately, we have been outclassed today by PSG. If we grab a goal, we can go to extra time because then we've got one, one away goal each, be one all in both legs. So we go to extra time. But with four minutes left on the clock, you know, I'll, I'll say push forward to them, but it's it's not going to work really. I think I think we've been quite unlucky. If we kept Harbour on the pitch, had it, had it be 11 v 11, it'd be a much tighter game, I think. And there we go. That's it. That, that was actually happened quite quickly. I was about to start talking more about how we need to... Uh, how, how the game just came out of our hands, basically, when, when, when Harbo got sent off. Some of you may think I was a bit bonkers for going a bit more defensive in the second half, but I think the scoreline would have been a lot worse if we didn't. And I feel like we needed that kind of defensive buffer to be able to keep ourselves in the game by one goal, for example. We only lost 1-0 in the end, which I think is very good. We're going to go calmly. Unlucky boys. Would have been nice to win, but don't worry about it. We've knocked out the Champions League in the first knockout round, so unfortunately... Real Oviedo are not going to be winning the Champions League in Football Manager 2018. What that does mean, though, is that we can switch our attention solely onto La Liga now. We can uh, focus on getting the title there. Uh, there's four games off till the Seville game, so once again, we will just rest the players before that. Um, and it's not long. You know, we've got nine games left this season now. Nine games left to go. As long as we don't mess things up too much, we will win a La Liga title at the end of the season. The under-19s, though, are still in their Champions League. They're going to the under-19s Champions League semi-final which I think is mental. I, don't, I can't believe they've got there. The under-19s are actually amazing. I'll tell you what, actually, if the under-19s get to the under-19s Champions League final, we'll watch that game as well, because that'd be pretty cool. This is ridiculous. Adzic has been dropped by Serbia. The Oviedo winger clearly needs to do more to impress the manager. However, Adzic is currently the reigning La Liga player of the year. He's also scored 19 goals and got 12 assists. Why has he been dropped? This, this infuriates me as much as it infuriates me that Osmanovic has not won World Player of the Year yet. Oh, it's actually okay. He's been he's actually been he's been called up now to replace someone. Um, literally uh, a few hours, six hours later on, he was called up. Um, but yeah, you know, I, he's so underrated by Serbia. I don't understand it. See, if we go into the Serbia team now and we sort it by club selection goals, he's got 19 goals. The next person's got six. Look, look at assists. He's got 12. Next person's got eight. I mean, how is he not being called up? How is he not the first person on the team sheet? I mean, Sasa Babic gets called up. Sasa Babic gets called up every single time and Adzic doesn't. How many, how many caps has Babic got? Thir he's got 13 and he's nowhere near as good as Adzic. So I just don't understand. Ah, the under-19s have been drawn against the, uh, the PSG under-19s for the Champions League semi-finals. So hopefully, the under-19s can can do one step better than us and beat PSG. Could that be nice, wouldn't it, to get a bit of revenge? Right then, back again for the Seville game. Uh, I'm not going to change anything. You know, this is the team that I just think is going to be good enough now to continue for the rest of the season and win the title. So I'm not really going to change much at all. I think it's the strongest line. There's no point rotating players. We've only got nine games left in the entire series. So I just feel like it's, it's just best to keep it together Get the boys that keep winning the games to keep winning the games. And fingers crossed, we'll end up with a title in a few episodes of time. Right then, kickoff is upon us here today. Seville are the opposition. They're in fifth at the moment. So they've got a lot to gain from winning today. Uh, if they win today, they move ever closer to Valencia and potentially a Champions League spot. So it's a big game for them. Of course, we're still nine points clear of Real Madrid. They kick off later on uh, in this game there, of course, because no, it's illegal basically for, for, for Spanish sides not to play at the same time. So... 
Real Madrid play later on. We can't really rely on them losing because they probably will win. So we have to win today if we want to keep our nine-point gap at the top of the table. And Luka Adzic, oh, 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 we finally, I had no idea what to say then. Adzic, absolutely wonderful stuff there. I thought he was going to absolutely just pile drive it, but obviously he saw the keeper moving across, saw the player coming across towards him, just neatly put it across to Orsolini who misses it, but then goes back to Adzic and Adzic finally does get the goal. So fantastic work there from Adzic. That is what I mean. That is why he is such a good player and I just can't understand why Serbia don't play him every single... Why he's not the Serbian captain, why he's not the most capped Serbian player. I just don't get why he's not called up consistently. Either way though, we are coming forward once again. Orsolini into that wonderful player Adzic again, this time putting it just wide of the post. But he's just so good. I love him. Of course, we're doing uh, Dortmund in the beta uh, for FM19 when that comes out, whenever it comes out at some point. Should be some point next week or this week now, I'd imagine. I reckon the first signing, though, is going to be Luka Adzic. I'm going to sign him straight away for uh, for Dortmund. He's just a wonderful player. Kadir on the ball then, uh, sort of into the attacking third. Now, Dad's ball forward to Adzic, intercepted, and the goalkeeper, Rico, can clear it up the pitch. But only as far as Sasa Babic, Ruiz now on the ball, in towards Orsolini. And we're coming forward now in some numbers here. Look, I mean, it's those cross-pitch passes that are so deadly. A Seville player got the interception there, but it did just fall into the path of Hans Osmanovic, who scores his... And that is, that is, that's his 29th league goal this season, I believe. He's, he's one away from 30 league goals, which is absolutely incredible. I tell you, I wish Hans Osmanovic was a real player so I could sign him for Dortmund as well. I wish he was a real player. But he's one of the best regens I've ever had. I love him. Actually, as we're now at the very, very end of Football Manager 2018, who has been your favourite regen? Not just, you know, in your games, that's what I mean. Who's been your favourite regen in your games or your favourite regen from the real deal or the Lincoln Loco? Obviously, Hans Osmanovic in this one is one of our favourite regens, but we had Hammer Time in, uh, in the Lincoln Loco. Seville could score a goal. I wasn't particularly paying attention, but they scored. As I said, Hammer Time in, in the Lincoln Loco. We had Lukasic in the Lincoln Loco, who was really, really good as well. Of course, Brad Yu, who I've sort of forgotten about before when I said, oh, Adjic is the best winger. It's actually Brad Yu. He's the best winger we've ever had. Uh, Brad, so obviously, Brad Yu is up there as well. But do let me know in the comment section, though, your favourite regen from one of your saves or your favourite regen from one of my saves. That would be great to hear. Second half, though, has been pretty lacklustre so far. No highlights whatsoever yet. Uh, we're going to make a few changes, though, out there. We're going to bring Thomas Party on for Harbour. He's not played particularly well in this episode at all. And I also want to give Vazquez a run out there instead of Babic. Other than that, we're going to just make those two changes, keep a little bit of a rest uh, for those players that need a bit of a rest. In fact, actually, Dad's looking quite tired out there. We may take Dad off uh, quickly as well. We'll bring uh, Stan on for him in that box-to-box -box midfielder position. But I think we should be able to see this game out now. Uh, Seville not really been much of a threat in this game. Five shots, four on target. Of course, they did score a goal, but other than that... They've not really been much of a threat at all. We've got another chance, though, uh, in the 82nd minute, though, as we come forward. Adzic on the ball, puts it forward towards Stan, who can get the ball across to Thomas Party, of all people, who's waiting at the far post. I don't know what Thomas Party was doing there. He's meant to be a bit more defensive, but that was a fantastic move, actually. And uh, fair play to Thomas Party for getting on the score sheet there. I have just noted as well that they're playing... Um, well, it, it just changed. George was at right wing then, which I was very confused about because George is... The ex Oviedo player that we had for a little while, George. Um, he's uh, he played for us for two seasons. Obviously, has has moved on, moved upwards in his career a little bit. I've got to say, Seville probably taking a bit of a, a punt getting on loan from Malaga. But he was just playing right wing a second ago. And I'm very confused by that. But they just brought someone else on or changed things around a little bit. He's gone back to right back now, so slightly more comfortable for him. Um, but perhaps that's why we scored that goal, because he was playing at right wing, and they have obviously must have had a right winger in defence for whatever reason. Either way, though, it looks like that is going to be that. It's all over here. Oviedo 3, Seville 1. We momentarily go 12 points clear of Real Madrid at the top of the table with eight games left to go now. Of course, uh, who, I mean, who do they play later on? It will tell us in a second. Oh, we've qualified for the Champions League already. Eight games to go, which is good. Uh, and they're giving us 1.5 million wages and uh, two, 26 million to spend. That's a lot That's a lot of wages. That's gone up quite a bit, I think. Uh, and, and in terms of transfer budget, that's gone up quite a bit as well. Also, in the out for three to four days with a groin injury. Uh, and Seville can't win the first division anymore, apparently, after that loss. So, unlucky to them. Uh, obviously, that would have relied on them beating us today and us losing every single game for the rest of the season. So... I don't think they had much of a chance anyway. 11 games without losing now in the league, which is pretty good going. I'm impressed with that. I didn't think this season was actually going to go as well as this. I thought when we lost Colono, we'd have a, we'd be missing a massive part of our game. But the money we got for him that we managed to reinvest in other positions and better a, a few better players in positions that we needed the better players in, I think it's actually worked out. In our, well, obviously it's worked out in our favour because we're top of the league by 9 points, 12 points. It's ridiculous. Real Madrid taking on Real San Sebastian. So actually that could be a close game, but I, I would still put money on Real Madrid beating them. So they will go back to 
Uh, eight points, nine points behind us. Right, I reckon then we've only got two games left of this season or this series. And and quite frankly, they should probably be towards the end. I reckon, in fact, there could only be one game left, one episode left. If we if we win the title early, that would be huge. I reckon then next episode we do Real San Sebastian and Real Madrid because potentially we could win the league away at Real Madrid. That'd be massive. And if we don't get the league wrapped up in that episode, next episode, uh, we've got Coruña and Levante after that as well, which would be pretty exciting. So there's there's a lot of exciting stuff coming up. Right then, well, thank you very much for watching today's episode. We're out of the Champions League, but we have a massive chance to win La Liga and potentially we could do it next episode. So make sure you join me for that. If you enjoyed today's episode though, do drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here, and I'll see you next time for some more Real Deal action.